Welcome! In this video, we'll introduce the basics of data mapping in Data Cloud. Wheel 1 describe how to prepare for data mapping. 2 list steps to complete during data ingestion. 3 summarize how to organize data with data models and mapping. And 4 demonstrate how to determine relationships between objects. We know you're probably excited to jump right into data mapping, but it's important to do a little prep first. Begin by assembling your team. If you're not sure who to involve in this project, ask yourself, who are my data experts? Whose expertise is needed for this project? Will this project be led by a partner or an internal expert? Although it is possible to set up data cloud mapping yourself, it is a complex process. We highly recommend working with an experienced data cloud partner on this project. In addition to a partner, we recommend involving the following individuals, when possible, to ensure your data mapping is a success. Data Aware Specialist. Responsible for creating and managing data streams, understand their contents and relationships, and harmonizing all incoming data into a cohesive data model. Data Cloud Admin. Responsible for configuring Data Cloud, provisioning users, and day-to-day -day support and maintenance. Program Manager or Project Manager. Responsible for coordinating resources and ensuring alignment between teams. Cloud Admins responsible for the segmentation strategy for their cloud, communicating data needs, and assisting the data cloud admin in setup. Executive sponsor, responsible for providing support and oversight as needed. Once you've assembled your team, the next step is to take a data inventory and create an offline data dictionary of each source system. Ask yourself, where is the data coming from? What does the data look like? Is the data ready to import? To help you get started, check out the data discovery worksheet, including in the session overview. This template can be used as the base for your data dictionary. Next, consider your field level data. For each object in the data sources that will be connected, identify field level data, its accuracy, and which data model object and field it should be mapped to. With the data dictionary in place and field level data identified, we're ready to move on to the next phase in the data mapping process data ingestion. The data ingestion phase starts by connecting a data source as is, meaning its data remains in its original form. A data stream is then created to extract this data from the source and bring it into data cloud, where it is stored in a data lake object and made ready to be mapped to a data model object. Only this mapped data can be used for data cloud segmentation and activation. To complete the data ingestion phase, follow these steps. Step one, Identify data sources to be ingested. Begin by deciding what data sources you want to connect. You can connect your data sources in several ways, including via the Salesforce CRM connector, Marketing Cloud connector, Google Cloud Storage connector, MuleSoft AnyPoint connector, the Ingestion API, Bring Your Own Lake or BY All, and more. Many of these connectors also offer starter data bundles. These optional bundles include a Salesforce-defined data stream with automatic data model object mappings to help you quickly set up and map your data. With Data Cloud, you'll be able to consume data at scale, whether it's coming from one of the built-in connectors for another Salesforce product or from your broader ecosystem using MuleSoft AnyPoint, API, and third-party integrations. Step two, cleanse, prepare, and format your data. This ensures that the data coming in is high quality and has the right data points to support your Data Cloud use cases. When new data is brought in, Data Cloud will attempt to automatically assign the data type of each field. Available data types include date, number, text, email, and Boolean, among others. Make sure to review and update these data types. Since once a data lake object is created, they cannot be changed and will impact how these fields can be mapped to data model objects later on. Once in Data Cloud, this data can be enriched and transformed further. For simple transformations, formula fields can be added to individual data streams. For more complex transformations, use batch data transform and streaming data transform after data ingestion and before data mapping to update one or more data lake objects. This preparation and ongoing data governance is crucial for success when using data cloud segmentation and activation capabilities. Step three, identify or create your primary key. The primary key is a field with a unique value that Data Cloud uses to identify individual records in a data set. 
for example, a customer ID or an order number. Each data stream must have a designated primary key. If a suitable field doesn't exist, a composite key can be created by combining two or more fields through a formula field. Because the primary key is the basis for deciding whether to add a new record or update an existing record, you should always select a primary key very carefully. Step four, select a data stream category. When creating a data stream, you must select a category or type of data found in that stream. The chosen category will dictate use cases, activation, and entitlement usage for that stream. The three data stream categories are profile, select the profile category for data corresponding to customers, businesses, accounts, or employees. Engagement, select the engagement category if the data is time-based, such as sales order transactions, email opens, or link clicks. Other, select the other category for data that is related to profile and engagement, but isn't in that set, such as product or store information. Consider the category very carefully as it will impact billing and the ability to change category later on is limited. Step five, set up a refresh schedule. And finally, set up an appropriate refresh schedule for your data streams. Data streams can operate on different refresh schedules and manual refreshes can also be initiated by clicking refresh now on the data streams record page. Now we have a good understanding of data ingestion. Let's look at data modeling and mapping. Once the data is ingested, the next step is to add structure using standard or custom data model objects. A data model is a way to organize and standardize data elements and to add data relationships. A data model harmonizes data from disparate sources, so we're able to effectively segment and draw insights from the data. The Customer 360 data model is the standard data model used by Data Cloud to help with interoperability and scalability across various Salesforce apps as well as from outside sources. This standard data model prepares a list of Salesforce published objects, fields, metadata, and relationships to ensure consistency across applications and business processes. Commonly used standard data model objects include account, lead, and individual. We recommend using standard data model objects where possible, but if they don't meet your needs as is, you can add custom fields to standard data model objects as well as create custom data model objects to store information that is unique to your business. It's important to keep in mind when setting up mapping, the primary goal of Data Cloud is identity resolution and creating a unified profile for each customer or account. Looking at the mapping canvas, it's easy to think all we're doing is labeling data for segmentation, but your mappings and relationships must be carefully considered. Data has to be mapped correctly in order for identity resolution to process and create a single, unified view of the customer or account. To drive value in harmonization, unification, and activation in Data Cloud, you must include the following data model objects in your data mapping. Individual or account, party identification, contact points like email, phone, address, social, OTT service, etc. Now that we have a better understanding of data modeling and mapping, Let's discuss how to determine data relationships between objects. When mapping in Data Cloud, it is vital to understand and define the relationships between data model objects. By establishing these relationships, we can connect and retrieve related data more efficiently and include this data in segmentation and activation. A data model object can have a standard or custom relationship with other data model objects. A standard relationship automatically exists but is inactive until the related fields are mapped, while a custom relationship must be manually created. The relationship can also be structured as a one-to-one -one or many-to-one -to -one relationship. To understand the relationships between objects, we first need to look at the raw data. Let's take a look at an example. First, we have the web sales order header dataset. In this example, we can see that there are no repeat values in the order ID column. This means that the order ID is unique and could make a good primary key. Now, in this example, the web sales order details data set, we can see there is also an order ID column, but this time it has repeating values. 36061 and 36062 appear twice. This signifies that there are multiple products in those orders. If we wanted to establish a relationship between these two objects, we would use the order ID field, as it is the common thread in both data sets. And based on the observed behavior, we can conclude that web sales order details is many to one with web sales order header. 
Once we understand the relationship, the final step is to define it on the Relationships tab in the Data Model Object Record. Now that we have a better understanding of data models and relationships, let's take a look at data mapping in action. To start, open the Data Streams tab to see all available data streams in the org. Then find and open the data stream we want to map. In the Data Mapping component, click on Start or Review. This will open the mapping canvas with the associated data lake object. Remember, if the data stream was created using a data bundle, then mapping will automatically be in place but should still be reviewed. You may want to add additional mapping. In the canvas, we can now review the mapping of our data lake object on the left to our data model objects on the right. Notice how a single data lake object can be mapped to multiple data model objects, and how a data model object field can only have one source. But a data lake object field can feed into multiple data model object fields. This is most clear with our primary key field that links all the objects together. If we want to add a new data model object to map to, we click on the pencil icon beside Data Model Entities. From here, we can see all available standard and custom data model objects. To add a model, we click on the plus icon to select it and then click Done or click Close if we don't want to add it yet. Let's say we want to map a data lake object field to an unmapped data model field. We search for the field in both columns. Make sure both field types are compatible. Click the name of the data lake object field, then click on the name of the data model object field. And now we can see a line connecting these two fields together. Now let's say we want to map a data lake object field, but there isn't a match on the data model object. In this scenario, we can create a new data model object field without having to leave the canvas. Under Unmapped, we can see the Add New Field link. We click on this and add our new field's name and data type, then click Save. Then we map the data lake object field to the newly created data model object field. Once we're happy with our field and object mapping, we click on Save and Close. And finally, if we want to confirm or add any additional relationships to our data model object, we open the data model object record and the Relationships tab. From here, we can review existing relationships or add new relationships using the Relationship table. And that brings us to the end. In this video, we've described how to prepare for data mapping, listed steps to complete during data ingestion, summarized how to organize data with data models and mapping, and demonstrated how to determine relationships between objects. We wish you the best as you start your data cloud data mapping adventures. For more detailed information, please visit help.salesforce.com or explore the Salesforce Trailhead. Thanks for watching.